Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and today I want to talk to you about the Ent eCarry. Stick around. Welcome back makers. Right next to me here is the Ent eCarry. It's a little printer that was sent to me by Gearbest for review. Now this comes pre-assembled as you can see here. The only thing that I had to do to this printer as soon as I took it out of the box was remove a protective sleeve in order for the bed not to move. That was basically it. It took me exactly seven minutes to get this thing out of the box and starting to print which was a very welcome relief by something sent to me from Gearbest, I have to be honest. Now it has a print volume of 150 by 150 by 150. It has also auto bed leveling, which we will talk about further on. And it comes with a power brick and not those standard power supplies that we usually see, which make it a bit more user friendly and safe. It does not however have a heat bed so you are restricted to certain types of filaments like PLA. So what I did was I threw in some white cheap PLA that I had running around and I also decided to do my thing and run a pre-sliced g-code that came in with the SD card. Lo and behold it actually printed and it printed quite well. There was a bit of Z banding in it but I wasn't sure exactly why however upon close inspection I could see that it was under extruding. Now I wasn't sure if it was the printer settings or it was the PLA. So I decided to run another pre-sliced G-code that came with the SD card and throw in some 3D prints PLA copper. And what came out was this guy right here. Not exactly sure what he is, whether he's a bear or not. Someone who's probably familiar can correct me. However, print wise, it wasn't bad at all. I could see that all of these prints were printed probably around 100 microns, which is extremely good. It's not perfect. There's quite a bit of Z banding. I had high hopes. So what I did was I installed the repetier that came with the uh, SD card. I just simply threw in Aria the Dragon and started printing. Unfortunately, the print didn't come that great. I wasn't too uh, happy with it. So I decided to create my own profile on Simplified 3D. I extracted all the start and NG code and I created my profile. Then I decided to run a 3D Benchy, as I always do, at 100 microns because it feels like 100 microns is, is where this thing shines. I also decided that for the first print, I would increase the extrusion multiplier to 130% to compensate for the under extrusion that was happening. This is the result. And this, ladies and gents, is a gorgeous Benchy. It came out beautifully. It's not perfect, but it's damn well close to being perfect. I was extremely, extremely happy with the result. So that told me that this printer has quite a bit of potential. So I decided, okay, let me change filaments. I threw in some rigid ink orange PLA and I decided to print Pegasus, which was modeled by a buddy of mine, uh, Ryan, 3D printed Aspie. This was printed at 200 microns. And as you can see, it printed out absolutely beautifully. I am extremely, extremely impressed with the quality of this print to come out of a $230 3D printer. So um, yeah, I was extremely happy with that. But then I decided I want to challenge this printer a bit. So I decided to print the Hollow Drowdy in uh, Colorfab Yellow PLA. I am not extremely well acquainted with Colorfab PLA, so I'm not entirely sure of the settings I was supposed to use, but I, I will get there eventually. However, having said that, the print still came out really good considering that this is quite a challenging print. It printed out quite well so I was also extremely happy with this. Then I decided to throw in some Velamen um, glow-in-the-dark filament because I had never used it before and I printed this hairy unicorn. It came out beautifully other than the fact that it messed up on the tip of the uh, of the unicorn. 
Now, this could be either my settings for the PLA or the fact that the printer might have issues printing very fine detail like this. I highly doubt that because it performed quite well on everything else. So it must be my settings with this particular filament. But other than that little tip uh, there, everything was absolutely gorgeous. Finally, I decided to print something in uh, filamentum PLA Extrafil Vertigo Gray. And this octopus is the result. It prints in a few parts, although the, um, the legs themselves or the tentacles themselves print in place like this. So the tolerances are actually quite good. It printed out really well. All I did was attach them to the body and it came out gorgeous. The only issues I uh, could see are a bit of the overhangs because I printed this without any support and I can see that when it stands down, some of these overhangs are like 90 degrees. So personally, I think it did a pretty good job printing this squid. So what I like about this printer, actually quite a lot. The fact that it printed right out of the box was a huge surprise to me and how easy it was for me to use it. All I did was throw in some filament, put in the SD card and start a print. Now, this thing does have auto bed leveling as well, and it comes in handy, especially if you receive a glass plate like I did, which was warped to kingdom come. I have never seen a piece of glass that is actually warped so much. Now, unfortunately, the way the um, auto bed leveling sensor is set up doesn't make it very accurate because it's one of those sensors where it's attached to the hot end and the hot end needs to touch the build plate, move slightly upwards, and the sensor detects movement, and then it knows exactly where the level is. So most of the time I had to print with a raft because it simply wasn't that accurate. I really like also the fact that this is a full aluminum body. The only acrylic that it has is there to cover the electronics and the body insides basically. It did come slightly slightly chipped on the side but nothing major. The board is kind of like an MKS baseboard but it has external stepper drivers which I'm guessing can be upgraded eventually so that's also another very good thing. One thing I don't really like is this ribbon cable over here. It feels very flimsy and if by mistake you actually snag this you can easily rip this up so I'm not too happy with that. However everything else has quite a lot going for it. It's a nifty little printer. You can easily carry it around thanks to this handle. It comes with a power brick instead of a power supply. It is rigid and as you can see it prints really well. So for 230 something dollars I'd say that's a really good deal. I also need to point out that this thing comes with a full spool of uh, PLA. So it's one kilogram of PLA and also come with a pre-assembled hot end. So if something goes wrong, all you have to do is just undo one grub screw, throw in the new hot end, and you're done. And that's something I have yet to see from any 3D printer kit coming out of China. So that, that bodes very well. And I'm, I was very happy to see this. That is it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of the Ant e Carry. If you have any questions, please leave um, all of them in the uh, comment section below. I will leave the affiliate link for the Ant e Carry in the video description so you can get more information and should you wish to buy it, you'll be helping out this channel. I want to point out that no compensation was given to me to do this review. Gearbest sent me this 3D printer with, without paying me, except for the fact that I had to pay a uh, custom duty for it. Thank you very much for watching guys. I especially want to thank my patrons for their support. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and as always, Happy making, guys.